So good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Bible Study. Pastor Tyrone, Pastor Dante will be this evening, and we will continue Proverbs 29, Part 2. Yeah. So before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful time in your word. And we just surrender this word over to you. We pray that you bless it, anoint, anoint it, that you give us revelation and give us all your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we just thank you for all bringing us all here this evening and bless our time together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, previously, previously we talked about Proverbs 29, verse 3, where it says, He, whoever loves wisdom, makes his father rejoice, but a companion of the harlot wastes his will. Comment. Okay. Verse 20, verse 5. It says, Amen. Well, go ahead. Well, um, those who, the scripture said, um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so, so those who, who love wisdom, they, they are apparently fear the Lord. And that is, uh, that, that is a good thing. Uh, so his father rejoices over those who fear him. Thank you, Pastor Rubis. Okay. Verse 5. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. We talked about flattery and those who flatter. And we have to be careful when the flattering they're slaying. Sometimes it can be a snare and a trap. Amen. Amen. Any comments about this? Beware of the flatterer. Amen. Verse 7. The righteous consider the cause of the poor. But the wicked does not understand such knowledge. Amen. Comments about this. Some good dialogue on this last week. Yes, we did. Very good dialogue. Well, let's continue on. Moving forward, we will continue on Proverbs 29, verse 10. And it says, the bloodthirsty, the bloodthirsty hate the blameless, but the upright seek his well-being. Amen. Mm. Any comments? So it's saying that the upright, it would be seeking the well-being of the blameless, right? Or is it the upright seeking? Yes, you're right. I think you're right. Okay. And also, I would add to that, the bloodthirsty hate the blameless because the bloodthirsty obviously is not does not is not a believer who believes in the Lord and who follows the Lord. Otherwise, he he couldn't be bloodthirsty. And so, so that we're talking about someone who don't have the Lord here, and Amen. and so so therefore he hates those who does love the Lord, the blameless. Right, those that look to the Lord. Right. And the reason that they're blameless is because they're covered in the righteousness of Christ. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Well, I'm sure most of you know, but yeah, I spent the majority of my life not an, an unbeliever in a sense, right? And so I have vivid memories of people who turned to Christ and converted and 
although I, I didn't hate them, but I couldn't relate. I was like, what a waste, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. I can truly, really, I can truly like uh, appreciate the fact that unless God calls someone and converts them, they cannot, you know. I mean, uh, it, yeah, it's not necessarily that it was hate, but it's, it's like can't relate, can't you know, understand what yeah, you, this guy was. Right. Yeah. 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 But that was before God called. Right, because you're just operating in the flesh, and the flesh doesn't want anything to do with the things of God. It makes its own way, it seeks its own will. Because you you're doing this all yourself. Yeah. Ultimately so, serve Satan whether we knew it or not. Yeah. So of course, you know, you not we're we gonna say hate the blameless, but we just don't understand. Yeah. Don't have eyes to see and ears to hear and heart to to love. That's right. Any other comments? <clears throat> In First John three verse twelve, not as Cain who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. That's a great example of the bloodthirsty. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. Any other comments? Years ago, we had a pretty in-depth study about Cain and why it says who was of the wicked one, but I don't think we have, it's not, may not be the time or place to go into that, but he truly didn't have, you know, the spirit of God in him, he didn't have the love of God, he was just going through the motions, right? That's right. So, yeah, I'm going to go Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Quickly, the offering that Cain gave to God wasn't his very best, right? Abel gave the very best, the fat of the first, 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 first one, yes. Um, and then, but Cain was just like, just gave like out of like obligation of those. God was looking at the heart. Yeah. And it's interesting in the New Testament, when you are even angry with a brother or sister, you have committed murder in your heart. And it's all about the condition of the heart. Yeah, he was very angry. He was giving his best. God rejecting his offering. Angry enough to commit murder, that's for sure. So he is considered the first murderer in the Bible? Um, actually, uh, he was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, so in the physical act of murder, that would be Cain. But the real murderer <laughs> is Satan, right? The serpent yeah. who caused Adam and Eve to eat of the tree was killed them, right? Right. So, but it's, that's deep, you know. But as far as yeah. the first physical murder, yes, Cain would be. Amen. Jesus said to the Pharisee, you love your father, the devil, who is a murderer from the beginning, right? That's right. How the comments? Well, uh, I, would, I would offer what the scripture offers 
is that when Cain brought his offering, he 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 just brought an offering to the Lord because that was the law. So he was working under the law. He, well, he, he just he brought an offering, but Abel he brought the first the first fruits of his offerings, the 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 uh, the best of, of the flock that he had, and so he he showed his 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 uh, respect for the love of God and giving of the best that he had to the Lord because the Lord deserved his best. And and also God, um, he sees our intentions. Um, he, he, I mean, even if Cain had given some of the best of his garden, if his intentions were wrong, and if, if it was just about following the law, the letter of the law rather than the spirit of the law, God sees those intentions, and um, just as He saw the intention, the intentions of the heart of of um, Abel. So um, um, that that's something you know. I think, especially in the times we're living in, that God, you know, He sees the intentions of our heart, um, and. And, you know, there's no hiding anything from God. Amen. 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 The Lord wants our best. And that's what Abel offered, his best. Amen. We should offer the Lord our best as well. Okay, hey, any other comments? Okay, verse 11. Ooh. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. I, I have a question about um, this verse, but also Proverbs in general. Like, as we go through... Um, the times that we're living in and we're seeing a lot of crazy stuff going on. Can, is it, is it not, and not, not that we will judge or should judge people, but if you clearly see someone who is, who is like this fool here, who's venting all of his feelings, all of his anger is just venting um, is it is it is it correct for us to to put him in that category um, or is that judging? You know, it says here a wise man will hold back his feelings and be uh, discreet and uh, and and not. So I, I, I guess I'm asking because we we see a lot of verses about seeking wisdom and you know and those that go with harlots or are they're not seeking wisdom and as we look at the world around us and the behavior of people uh in around us whether they be on you know leaders or or just people that we work with um is it wrong for us to use this as a measure of a person? Um, or is that judging? Well, I personally feel that God doesn't want us to measure anybody up. He wants us to love everybody and leave okay. judgment to him, right? If we so see someone we... doing things that we don't think is correct, we pray for them. We ask for God to, if it's not what God wants them to be doing, to, to speak to them, to do something, to help them get in line with his will or or even repent okay. and be baptized, whatever, right? All but, right. Yeah, we. I don't believe God wants us to size up people and then be, behave differently because of what, what they're doing. 
Otherwise, he'll say, let the one amongst you without sin cast the first stone, right? Right. Exactly. Well, that was my question, yeah, about judging. But so many of these proverbs, it's like, you know, it makes it look like black and white, and which is hard knowing that um, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, no matter what. And it's only because of the righteousness of Christ that we even have a chance at being with the Lord. Um, it, 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 it just, uh, in some of, some of these proverbs that we've been studying every week, you know, it's so clear that, you know, the one who seeks the wisdom of God is the one who who's who's walking with God, you know. So, but uh, thank you for clarifying that for me because I struggle with that, um, and and I I um you know I need to learn to pray to pray for the, the, the fools of the world and and pray that I myself don't fall into that foolish foolishness. Um, yeah, so thank you, Pastor. I'd like to add something to, to that, to uh, Sister Joanna's, com to both comments, and is that this, when this was written, the, the people, the Israelites had been imbued with with the law practices of the law and so and and and, and this was the law was kind of black and white so to speak that is it was either one way or another there was no in between and and uh and here when a fool vents all his feelings he's he's drawn from is this right or is this wrong or is, you know is this one of the commandments or, or not, or which way does it go? And so, however, a wise man who whose wisdom primarily comes from the works of Solomon, which is this proverb here, uh, or likened to this proverb here, he understands that that everything is not black and white. There's 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 other ways uh, for a man to go. It's not all black and white as i said but but sometimes you have to uh condition yourself to be in in the midst of things and uh holding things back or not spreading out everything you think is right because a certain you you read it somewhere in the you know in in genesis uh and so yeah th those are my comments Pastor Rufus, I think what Sister Joanna closed with in her comments was really important. We will study last Sunday, the Word of God is, is a discerner, right? It, it divides soul and spirit, bones and marrow. If we look at the Word, especially like the Proverbs, is like an x-ray machine for our soul, right? When we read it, it's really about, it's going to show us what's going on in us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a check, uh, a check as to what what we're doing and god will his spirit will highlight a word like this if we happen to be somebody who just vents all of our feelings all the time we're going to read this and if we're in the spirit if we are god's children it's not going to be a rule it's going to cut it's going to cut and say oh you're you're talking to me about this so god give me discernment help me mature because it's a sign of maturity, spiritual maturity, to have discernment on when to speak and when not to speak and all of mm -hmm. that. And so this is, the word is there just to speak into our hearts and let us see what's happening in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful gift from God. It's not there to condemn us, and it's definitely not there for us to judge other people, but it's there. Right. Yes. Change. That's what I was going to say. I said, we have to look at the, the content of the fool and what he's venting about. 
Mm -hmm. If he's slandering and he's talking about people and talking about the workplace and talking about what other stuff doing and and all of that stuff, yeah, that's we probably should hold back and not give our opinions about it. Mm -hmm. And that's just you know because that is a snare and a trap. They want to get us get you going on and start agreeing with them and all of that. Mm -hmm. But if they're like confessing their feelings about things they're going to, then sure, if the spirit leads us to edify them and share good things with them to speak to them, then yeah, we should do that. We should we should share it and try and lift them up and make them feel better. So it's a matter of, you know, the the circumstance of this venting that's that's going on. Because we know people complain all the time about things, about people, about work, about the government, about all of this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and, and I mean, they do. And, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and, you know, you can never go wrong holding back because, you know, if you say something they don't like, then they'll come against you too. Mm -hmm. Or you don't agree with them, or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's 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 written there to just help us, like Pastor Steve said, just to discern the situation mm -hmm. and listen to what's being said. And I think we can't go wrong with that. Amen. And also to look at this um, in the uh, like to. If I read this verse and I see any aspect of myself in this, that's a, a, a wake up call to me. Yes. A fool vents all his feelings, you know, but a wise man holds them back. And um, yeah, that and, and I guess the wording of, of these proverbs kind of can lead you to kind of want to apply it to other people because it's sort of written um is this like written in the third person it's not written in the first or second person it's written in the third person like you're do you know what i mean so i it has been at times a little bit frustrating reading the proverbs in this way because of how they sound to me it sounds a little judgmental you know and so i you know i mean king solomon wrote these right so oh, yes, what was obviously. was he applying the standard um well was he applying it to himself was he applying it to others that he kept company with or you know i mean but he was given these proverbs as as the answer to his prayer when he asked god for wisdom right <laughs> well, it, and he, he asked god for wisdom and then he had experience right mm -hmm. that he 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 learned things but ultimately we always have to remember that the bible the word is spiritual, it's Holy Spirit inspired. So even though we say Solomon wrote it or David wrote it, it's in the spirit, right? It's not mm -hmm. from their flesh. And so uh, God is speaking. God is writing it. Right. And Amen. God uses this. Yeah, for you, them to write it, but it's God that's writing it. And rather than telling, calling, accusing us of being one or the other, he gives examples of someone who's walking in faith and wisdom or somebody who's walking in the flesh and or immature or whatever the case mm -hmm. and, yeah we just consume that word and let god speak to us um but yeah, amen yeah. and your original question we don't need to hold this up and look at people and say what what are they a fool or why yeah right thank you any other comments? Um, yes. Um, I, I'd just like to add just a little twist to everything that has been said. I mentioned the, the, the first readers of this were those who were coming out a practice of the law. And there was some who strictly believed in 
and to a letter the law. And but these things, these these words, they have the tendency to just polish the works of the law. Uh to to teach the people that that there are there are certain things that it is not good to just depend on the law for an act of consciousness uh because if you do you'll you you'll you'll fall in the category of 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 someone who's who's not uh working um I, I need a word for it. it's the opposite of fool uh not not working like that but working not, work. it's not working out of the wisdom of god right not yeah not working from a point of wisdom from right god. of the wisdom of god yes which which was given through these proverbs to 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 a great extent Amen. That's that's all I have. Okay. Anyone else? Proverbs fourteen, verse thirty-three. <laughs> Wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding, but what is in the heart of fools is made known. Amen. Amen. Yes, wisdom, notice wisdom rests, that is, is often kept quiet, but but in a fool, it, it, it is revealed. The fool reveals the fool reveals him his what he thinks he knows, uh, or what's in his heart. But wisdom comes from a place of understanding. Verse 12, as the ruler pays attention to lies, all his servants become wicked. Hmm. Verse, um, and the servants comments. follow their leader. <laughs> true. Yes, they often follow their leaders, and so and uh, if a ruler pays attention to lies, well, that's where his servant's going to operate from, from that, that basis. Think about the good kings and the bad kings. And the bad kings, the people failed. When the ruler failed, when the king, they followed their leader. And, you know, and go well with them. God punished them as well. Comments. In Second Kings twenty one verse nine, but they paid no attention. And Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than the nation whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Does anybody have any background to this verse? Manasseh, wasn't he a son of, of Joseph? Or is this another Manasseh? Uh, yeah, we'd have to look at the son of Joseph. Well, uh, this one is the tribe of them. 
Asa reigns in Judah. He was 12 years old when he became king. Okay. And he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hezibah. That's a different one. So it's a different Manasseh. Yes. Thank you. As in verse 2, he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. According to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So he was 12 years old when he became king. Yeah. Wow. When he seduced them to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed. Wow. He was pretty evil there. Wow. Who his father was. They say it's who his mother was, but he didn't say who his father was. Well, if you go back to the chapter before, and Hezekiah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we always talk about these kings and we try to equate this to leaders in ministry today. And so, in this case, Manasseh built all the high places and did a lot, a lot of pagan worship. A lot of mm -hmm. that stuff, right? And it caused the people to sin. Yes. And so, you know, the responsibility that God gives leaders to minister and <laughs> pastors to run churches is very important because literally a church, if, if, a, if a, the one leading the church or the elders of the church are doing things that are against God's will, the people are going to do it thinking it's God's okay. will. Do it. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. so then not only they are the ones sinning, but everybody, everybody's yeah. going astray. Right? So fortunately, we have our chief shepherd leading, and we just follow him. That's the, the goal. And he always would always point us in the right direction to do the right thing. We just can't lean on our own understanding. You have to listen for his voice. Right. You seek him. It's like a church, I think it was in Texas where the main pastor had poison in the communion and gave it to all of the members of the church. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. and they, they all died. Wow. All followed him. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's that sounds similar to the Jim Jones. Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking. Terrible thing that happened in yeah. the seventies, the late seventies, late seventies. But oh, he he seduced his people in into believing him and they drank poison and they died men women and children that would definitely be the extreme end of things but i think that we all get you know it's so crucial churches today may not be doing poison and all that but they may th be thinking they're serving the lord but if we don't really seek the lord we may have picking up traditions that aren't really from God, doing things because everybody else does it, and ultimately mm -hmm. causing God's children to sin. Kind of a, a spiritual poisoning. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. The prophet, the artist, mentioned that many of the churches today won't stand until the right. around or their lampstand will be taken away. We can see some of them start to fall now. Well, I think you know, the verse, you know, the, the fool or the wicked or whatever, their intents of their heart will be revealed. So it's not only because they talk a lot, but 
but God can also, if we're unrepentant, God can cause it to come like like David and, and Bathsheba. He was unrepentant. He wasn't he didn't fall and then quickly go to God. He went a long time. Um the child was already born, I think, like a year later, and 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 then Nathan had to come and tell him, you know, and there was consequences for that. Because it, and we're talking David. I mean, we did a lot of things to cover it up. We, like, not, not have a way of moment. bringing stuff to the surface. Lord, help us that we just be transparent with God and not, you know. You have to go through that. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You have any other comments? <laughs> I can't hear you. I said, you are the man. <laughs> <laughs> the one that, yeah. when he heard the story of the man and the lamb, yeah. and the, the man had killed his, the richer man had killed the other man's pet. That lamb, yes. And, and, it, and, and it was actually talking if about only you, lamb. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A better act, I, uh, example would be uh, Haman and how he had a plan to uh, to get Mordecai, and yet not only did he it get revealed that it, that was his plan, but he also did he end up hanging on the. It was all yeah. turned on him too. Right? Yeah. His own plot failed against him. Yeah. Other comments? So Hammond dug his own grave, huh? <laughs> he built his his uh his his get what do they call the thing that you hang on? Gallows. Gallows. Yeah, he built it for himself. Without knowing it, but yes. Right. Okay, verse 13. The poor man and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives life to the eyes of both. Mm -hmm. They both were in need of light, which only <laughs> could come from the Lord. Yes. Spiritually, obviously, he is the one who can bring everyone, oppressors and poor people, and you name it. Give light to them spiritually. And I think, I don't know what your, your supporting verse, but it was a tough verse to do. Yeah. Jesus said, He makes it rain on the just, just and the unjust. Say, yeah. yeah. So we all go through experiences in life, whether we're believers or not. And yet, God, for His children, well, really for everyone, is ultimately intent is for our good you know I talk about why is there a tribulation well because no one's going to cry out to God unless they lose control right that's right if they're comfortable that's right it's not going to happen but in his mercy he allows tribulation and it affects everyone but those who already trust him are at peace and those who don't Cry out and come to that peace. Amen. It's like um the poor man and the oppressor, or in other words, um the perpetrator, right? Or something like that. Or yeah, it could be a it reminds me of Saul in the New Testament, mm -hmm. who was at first persecuting the children of God, mm -hmm. who followed the way. And then he lost his sight. He couldn't see anything. Yeah. Restored his 
sight back. Physically, it gave him spiritual sight, which he didn't have before. Yeah. It's the Lord who gives light to the eyes of both. That's right. Yeah. That previous thing where I was talking, I guess David is not really the case. David just needed God to give him revelation, but he wasn't like a wicked person who has evil intent. You know, like he got convicted. Yeah, he got convicted. He was trying to cover up his sin. Right. That's what he was doing. Right. But God showed him that. He was watching that he knew he convicted he repented he did have consequences but it's not evil intent in the sense of the way pain yeah. Yeah. you can even see david even if he was a man after god's own heart had all his shortcomings and then his son who was given all the wisdom Still <laughs> yes. <it>. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> In Ezra nine verse eight. And now for a little while grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape, and to give us a peg in his holy place, that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of revival and bondage. Comment? Praise the Lord. The just and the unjust as well. Mm -hmm. The last part that God may enlighten our eyes and give us some measure of revival in our bondage. Um, there's a lot of revivals happening, especially in Southern California, right? Yes. In the midst of all that's happening in this country and all over the world, um, there's still, like God is still moving yes. people. How many were baptized? 12,000 were baptized. And what, where was it? Mm -hmm. And actually, a lot of college campuses, too, all over the United States, there are, like, revival. In the midst of the protest that's going on, there's also, like, a lot of baptisms at college. Verse 14, the king who judges the poor with truth, his throne will be established forever. Amen. A good king. <clears throat> a fair king, a just king. He will be blessed. Amen. That is. Jesus Christ. Amen. A true king. Any other comments? Well, you might think, oh, well, we would think that the poor would be more in need of to be ha to have a favorable judgment. And so that king who who judges the poor with truth will will gives him an, an upper hand in his life. Uh, and so therefore that king will be rewarded. Uh, with a long kingship.
you know, we think about beginning of Solomon when he was praying, he said, you just want to be able to judge your people and be fair and be a good king. And he wanted to have the wisdom to do that. And of course, God gave him wisdom. And he started out good. Amen. Amen. Good example. This throne will be established forever. Comments? In Isaiah 11, verse 4, But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Amen. 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 Comments. Sounds like our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Amen. And it's his word is his weapon. The one that slays, right? The mm -hmm. double edged sword. Verse 15. The rod and rebuke gives wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Hmm. <laughs> At the rod again. <laughs> Don't spare the rod. <laughs> God chastens those whom he loves. Yes, he does. I despise the chastening of the Lord. Any other comments? Not being in the flock, not being in the word, you know, left to themselves, ultimately there's no sanctifying going on. There's no, you know, well, remember in the New Testament, um, by now you ought to be able to eat meat, but you're still needing milk. It's kind of shameful, right? Because there's an expect expectation of growth and maturity. But if it's not in the word or in fellowship, even right in, in a ministry where you're getting the word and you're getting guidance and teaching and so forth, where the word is doing the work in you, then you're gonna grow. And the Holy Spirit. Well, wisdom is considered a, a she, and the Holy Spirit can be kind of like a mother too, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so do not grieve the Spirit. Yeah. Or shame. You have to feed the mother. Spirit, right? In the sense of feeding it the Word. Well, your own Spirit, but the your Holy spirit. spirit. Oh, yeah, our Spirit. Yeah. Spirit of God hovered over the waters, right? It's uh, like it's the nurturing, looking after us, and we can grieve the Holy Spirit or bring shame to the Holy Spirit when yeah. we're not growing. Well, the word tells us that do not grieve the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? Amen. Any comments? In Proverbs 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. Mm 
Don't spare that rod. <laughs> Obedience through his suffering. Let it be all due. Any other comments? And you got love. And now leave us in the condition that he told us. And discipline is definitely valuable. Not enjoyable at the time. And in the end, it produces the right fruit. And it's truly necessary. Otherwise, we stay in the same condition we're That's in. That's right. And there's no growth. Other comments? Okay, 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous will see their fall. Amen. Comments. Interesting. <laughs> Today, just before we came, you know, gathered here, I went and Stop to pick up our dinner. Three young teenagers, I guess. And they were acting pretty confident and um, I don't know what the word be, mocking and saying a lot of things. And I was contemplating how it is you see it when people are in groups they become bolder yes they do and they feel like they can be a little wilder or more intimidating but if you take that person out away from that group mm -hmm. they, they're not the same right that's right that's another human nature thing being in this world right wow. so i never really applied that to this but it's true you know you get a bunch of people together that are not believers, and generally it's going to get met, you know, messier, right? Um, seeing their fall, well, hopefully it's fallen to their knees, right? Hopefully. So, you know, ultimately, Sodom and Gomorrah paid the price, right? There was a bunch of people who all like doing the same thing, and it, it got really crazy. And fortunately, they 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 saw their fall. Uh, uh, Abraham watched the bloom of smoke going into the air, and mushroom cloud. So, but for us today, we pray for them, and we pray that God would really stop them in their tracks, bring them to their knees, so they can be saved. The fall we want to see, to right, see them right. fall to them. In the Old Testament, 3,000 died, and the New Testament, 3,000 repented and came to the sea. But also throughout the Bible, you can see that God turns the plans of the enemy back on them absolutely so even if the wicked are multiplied and transgression increases the righteous those who put their trust in the lord will see their fall absolutely we'll see <laughs> bring it back on them. it's not both god's people it's god's people Oh yeah, we saw that. Jesus. We saw that thing from uh, Jonathan Kahn, right? The the one who uh, the <clears throat> the leader who attacked Israel from the air ended up dying from the air. Yeah, yeah. He saw him fall. Stood in front of leadership and 
first Israel died on the spot, had a heart attack right when he finished talking. Yeah. See them all fall. In Psalm 37, verse 34, wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. Amen. Yeah. I talked about, you know, staying under the, the wings and even what happens. But it will not come near you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And again, I know I feel very strongly that we don't war against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities, spiritual hosts. And so when we see people, he wants us to pray because we might be under those wings and we see them suffering, but we want them to cry out and get under those wings, right? Because they don't all know what they're doing. That's why Jesus said that. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. We we still have flesh. And I believe the reason why is for us to have compassion on other people. I think we'd be very self-righteous is if God just redeemed us and all of a sudden we were sinless. And we would just start judging everybody else. Which would be sin in itself. That's right. Right? But I think it's really like. Easy, much easier to have compassion on people when we have our own struggles and we know that at least we have God leading us and slowly changing us but if they don't have God they cannot change themselves they can try but ultimately God's got to do that and we got to want God to, to do it yes I mean we can easily have been offended or angry or don't think they deserve it sometimes. Uh -huh. But we got to want people to come to the Lord. We got to want God to change them and, and bring them in because we don't want to see them buried. You know, I know it's a hard thing sometimes because of the things that people put us through and the things that have been done and all of those things. But, but God wants them to come to him. So we ought to want that as well. Amen. Amen. That's why he puts a thorn on our side to keep yeah. us slow and humble. That's right. Thank Anything you. that we're struggling with, he allows it to happen so we don't get so prideful and puffed up. Thank you for confirming the sermon with us. Your sermon? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Praise the Lord. Prideful and puffed up. Thorn on the side? Yes. Well, I mean, it's not the title. Yes. Slopes. You just described part of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Any other comments before we close? Okay, well, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together in your word. We thank you for just being in the midst of us and just uh, blessing us all to be here this evening and given us all the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we continue to study your word and continue to feed us and guide us and lead us in your word and in our spirit and help it strengthen us, write these words in the tablets of our hearts, continue to give us a good night's sleep tonight and bless the rest of our evening and just be in the midst of us and help us as we continue to start the Sabbath day tomorrow. And we give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you all. God bless everyone. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.